Catherine Burton, Hedge Hunters, After the Credit Crisis, How Hedge Fund Masters Survived Step into the world of successful hedge fund managers as Hedge Hunters, After the Credit Crisis, How Hedge Fund Masters Survived takes you on a journey exploring the traits and strategies of some of the most prominent figures in hedge funds. From the grandfather of commodities trading, Boone Pickens, to short-selling wizard Jim Chanos, this book summary offers a glimpse into their investment styles and their secrets to success. Learn how the market veterans adapt to the ever-evolving financial landscape, the importance of intensive research, and how hedge funds recover from major setbacks. Qualities of a Successful Hedge Fund Manager Mark Yesko has outlined essential qualities for a great hedge fund manager, including independence, guts, humility, intellectual honesty, connections, ambition, smarts, respect for employees, and integrity. While managers have unique personal styles, these traits contribute to their success. The Legendary Boone Pickens Boone Pickens, the grandfather of commodities trading, founded BP Capital Management with $4.3 billion assets under management, including $1.6 billion of his personal wealth. Pickens' squad of 11 managers forecast directions in oil and natural gas and invests in futures markets accordingly, taking long-term positions in energy stocks without hedging. With more than 50 years of experience as an operator and trader in oil and gas, Pickens believes in the peak oil theory, which he uses to inform his investments. Despite losing almost 90% of his commodities fund in 1998, his funds have not had a losing year since then. Pickens attributes his success to his team approach, referring to his investment committee as his team. Avenue Capital's Distressed Debt Investment Strategy Avenue Capital Group, New York-based fund managed by Mark Lazary, focuses on distressed debt investment strategies that prioritize downside protection. Avenue Capital trades in senior loans and securities of companies close to bankruptcy, producing returns similar to equity investments. The hedge fund has $14.5 billion in assets under management, with conservative clients such as state pension funds. Lazry's successful investment strategy is attributed to his ability to identify opportunities where other hedge fund managers do not and his emphasis on selectively covering only 10 companies. He sold a $280 million stake in the firm to Morgan Stanley in 2006 and employs Chelsea Clinton. Lazry recommends working under a mentor to succeed in the portfolio management industry, as much of what is crucial for success is innate. The Canyon Way Former Harvard classmates, Josh Friedman and Mitch Julis run Canyon Partners, a successful investment company in Los Angeles. They opened Canyon in 1990 with a focus on intensive research and a multi-strategy approach that invests in a range of instruments. Their portfolio is well diversified with low volatility, placing a premium on situations where a company's stock or bonds are undervalued but are about to move up. Canyon also provides private equity firms with the cash to implement buyouts, managing about $2.5 billion in collateralized debt and loan obligations. Clients have the flexibility to withdraw money quarterly from its offshore fund and annually from its large domestic fund. Canyon has four other portfolio managers and more than 30 analysts. Friedman focuses on leveraged buyout and private equity, while Julius works more with mutual fund portfolio managers. Canyon's only losing year was in 1998 when Russia's currency was devalued, causing their flagship fund to fall. To enhance their business, they hedge their portfolio when they suspect that markets may be about to decline. Jim Chanos and the Art of Short Selling Jim Chanos, founder of Kinecos Associates, is a short seller who manages about $4 billion, making his firm the largest fund focused on short selling. Chanos targets consumer fads, accounting issues, and existing industries hindered by new technology. He has the ability to predict problems before they arise, which he applied while warning about Enron a year before it went bankrupt. Although short selling is risky, the strategy is beneficial for tax-exempt investors as it is treated as ordinary income. 
Chanos's unusual organizational approach, which relies solely on him and his five partners for ideas, has kept the firm's turnover rate relatively low. Jim Chanos, founder of Kinikos Associates, is a short seller who manages about $4 billion, making his firm the largest fund focused on short selling. The article explains how Chanos has a rare skill of predicting problems before they arise. This skill is something Chanos applied while warning about Enron a year before it went bankrupt. Chanos targets companies associated with consumer fads and booms that go bust for short selling, along with companies with accounting problems. One unique aspect of his firm is that almost all the ideas come from Chanos and his five partners, not from analysts, as at other firms. Short selling is highly risky, but beneficial for tax-exempt investors. Chanos's unusual organizational approach, which relies solely on him and his five partners for ideas, has maintained a relatively low turnover rate at the firm. Pension fund managers initially regarded short selling as too risky. Still, Chanos argues that it is good for tax-exempt investors because the profits are treated as ordinary income. Seed of View Capital Management Seed of View Capital Management is a hedge fund launched in 2004 by Jeffrey Schachter and Burton Weinstein, with initial backing of $50 million that rose to $600 million by 2007. The company invests primarily in bank debt, junk bonds, and distressed stocks and bonds. To improve performance, stop-loss processes were implemented, along with two interactive databases for communication with analysts. Analysts also submit their ideas for trade every weekend. Weinstein manages money while Schachter spends 70% of his time investing and the rest of his time handling marketing and administration. How Dwight Anderson's Osprey Fund Lost and Recovered Billions Dwight Anderson's Osprey Fund is a $3.5 billion investment fund that focuses on the commodities and stock markets. In 2006, the fund experienced huge losses which Anderson was able to recover within nine months. In fact, the fund returned up to 8% in the first seven months of the following year. Anderson attributes his success to his team's expertise in assessing the supply and demand of commodities and searching for undervalued stocks. However, the fund's long positions in mining and oil companies declined, and Anderson incorrectly predicted that the price of copper would decrease. Anderson faced difficulties with the long duration of the portfolio during periods of price volatility. To handle losses, he implemented safety measures like reducing exposure on losing positions and backing away from unusually large commodity price fluctuations. He increases his holdings when losing positions begin to move in his favor. Anderson believes that managers' investing styles should match their strengths and personalities. His early career as a manufacturing consultant taught him how to analyze a firm's operations, management team, and recommend ways to improve the business. He has found that investing in ideas or trends that journalists write about is often too late. Anderson's experience in the commodities trading division of Goldman Sachs and Tiger Management has helped him to manage his own firm, Tudor Investment Corporation, and Osprey since 1999. He explains how so few hedge funds succeed once they grow large since it is hard to find market inefficiencies that have a positive impact on returns. The proceeds from the sale of a 20% stake in his company to Lehman Brothers Holdings in 2005 helped Anderson launch the Osprey Wingspan Group of Funds. Anderson's success shows that expertise and experience are crucial in investing, but one must be cautious of being right too soon. Being ahead of the herd can be just as painful as being behind it. Bruce Ritter's Advantage Bruce Ritter, the founder of Yen Nix Management, credits his childhood on an Oregon farm for his success in trading agricultural commodities. At the age of 55, he launched his fund with seed money from Osprey Wingspan, and now has a five-person investment team including a meteorologist. Ritter believes that the emphasis on biofuels is dangerous and could undermine global food supplies. He also notes that institutional investors' large capital inflows affect prices. His next objective is to research the amount of money flowing into commodities index funds.
as we delve into the lives and strategies of successful hedge fund managers and hedge hunters, we find certain common traits such as independence, ambition, integrity, and a knack for identifying undervalued opportunities that others may not see. These market masters navigate the murky economic waters, learning from their mistakes, and evolving their investment styles to stay ahead of the curve. With this book summary, readers gain a wealth of knowledge from the experiences of industry leaders, enabling them to better understand the intricate world of hedge funds, and perhaps even apply these insights to their own investment journeys.